Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. I'm Rob McClendon. Well, Oklahoma received a grade of D-plus and a 46 ranking among the 50 states in Education Week's latest annual survey. The report, called Quality Counts, focuses on student outcomes, state spending, and educational opportunity. Now, despite these low marks, Oklahoma actually improved its national ranking from 48th to 46th. State Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister says the results came as no surprise. In a written statement, Hoffmeister said, we will not see anything different until we do something different. The Quality Counts report is a stark reminder that we cannot progress in education without a full commitment to a better plan and the resources to execute it. And it is those resources where we begin today. Since 2008, Oklahoma leads the nation for the largest cuts of dollars used directly in the classroom. If I can, I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And these numbers are from a report from the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. And what you see here, all these states in red, well, they've all cut education spending. But none have cut more than Oklahoma. For example, Texas has cut by about 10%. But after you figure in inflation, Oklahoma's general education funding per student is down by 24.2%. Now, nationally, we did go through a great recession that actually started way back in 2007 and went midway through about 2009. And that national downturn translated into some across-the-board cuts on the state level, including education. But Oklahoma was one of the first states to recover from what's been called the Great Recession, thanks in great part to our booming energy economy. And here is why I point that out. When you look at this list, you go down to the very bottom, there is North Dakota. Now, if you remember, that is the state that for some of those same years was the only one outperforming ours thanks to their red hot energy economy. So while we were making cuts to education spending during those boom years to a tune of about 24.2%, they in turn were increasing spending by 25.9%. So what does that mean in true dollar terms? Well, total appropriations for Oklahoma public schools is $173 million below what it was in fiscal year 2008. And while local ad valorem taxes, those taxes most all property owners pay, did increase in that same period, it's not enough to make up for the state cuts. So when you combine local property taxes and state funding per student spending in Oklahoma has dropped by roughly 10.1% after inflation. A bigger cut than all but eight other states. And in our region, when it comes to per pupil spending, we're also bringing up the rear. Ann Kane is with the Oklahoma State School Board Association. The Oklahoma Center for Ed Statistics uh, just published a document that shows when you think about surrounding states, so we hate to be behind Texas, but for us to spend what Texas spends on funding per pupil, we would need over $900 million. Mm -hmm. Kansas, for us to catch up to Kansas on funding per pupil, we would need $2 billion additionally. Now here's how we stack up when it comes to per pupil funding in the region. Kansas tops the list, spending $11,849 per pupil followed by Arkansas, New Mexico, and Texas, with Oklahoma a distant fifth with per-pupil expenditures of $8,631. When you figure in how many students they have in Texas, they're spending almost a billion themselves more on those children than we are. And Kansas with two billion, and they have fewer students than we do which means more money is going into the classroom to fund each of those students. A mismatch in funding that many worry could have a long-term impact on our economy. Jim Hunsinger is the Bank of Oklahoma's Financial Chief Investment Officer and follows economic trends for a living. I think first and foremost would be infrastructure and education. Those two things are vitally important. Um, you have to have uh, the roads, the schools, um, the, the unglamorous thing like sewer systems and water supplies, you have to have all of those things in place and then you have to have a vibrant 
education system. And I'm not sure we can call ours a vibrant education system at this point, and it really needs to be in order for us to excel. Now, some will argue that when you put a cost-benefit ratio to education funding in Oklahoma, you actually get more bang for the buck when it comes to student attainment. But this is an issue that goes well beyond which state has the highest test scores. When we return, we'll examine the gap between student outcomes and industry needs.